Hey everyone, Leaf here. Today, I'm going to have a video for you on cameras, specifically the type of camera that you should probably look at buying if you're looking at buying a camera and why. Okay, I'll start this off by being forthcoming saying I don't have all of the cameras that I'm going to talk about today. I have a bit of a selection. But there are some that are missing because I've just never had the use for them up until now. Like even still, right now, there's a few cameras that I don't have use for, so I haven't gone and got them. Now, for the purposes of the discussions, I'm going to start off with the camera that everybody has, the one on their phone. For this, I've got an iPhone 7. It takes good pictures, or pictures, does good video, does 4K video, uh, does 4K video at 60 frames a second, and... If you're looking for a camera that does good video, takes snapshots, it's the one you always have with you, the phone is the one you want. Now, what can it not do? It doesn't take very good low light pictures. It's not particular, so no low light pictures are not very good. It doesn't take, uh, it's not very durable. You don't want to drop it too much, so it's not going to be, you can't use it really as an action cam because you're going to be too worried about breaking it. So. A couple downsides with it. It's temperature sensitive. If you get it much below the free or much below freezing, it's going to stop working. You get it too hot, the screen's going to go black. It's like, uh, say, phone too hot, can function, must cool down. And once again, you're out of use for a camera. So, next type of camera, we have a point and shoot. In this case, I have an underwater camera. Now, it's not a perfect underwater camera, but and it's not a perfect point and shoot, but it does both fairly well. And in this case, it has a decent sensor. It's waterproof to 30 feet. This one is shockproof, and it does what most people want a point and shoot for. It takes decent pictures, slightly better pictures than, say, your phone, because it's got a bigger sensor. It'll give you more depth. This one has an optical zoom, so you, you can zoom in to a certain point without losing any picture quality, which again, unlike your phone on your cap or the phone camera, you just don't have that option. Whatever you zoom in, you're gonna lose your photo resolution. It's just the way it is. Now, is this good for everything? No. This has a lot of the drawbacks of the phone camera as well. This one you run into the issue of poor low light. So if you're gonna be using it in the dark, you gotta use the flash. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you want to use the video camera feature in the dark, you're more or less out of luck. It just isn't gonna work. So, a couple options, a couple differences. Both this one and, or sorry, both the phone and this camera, for instance, will do GPS tagging of your pictures. So if you want to know specifically where you took a picture, you want to keep it for memory, you can do that. They're both great for doing snapshots. Now, here's where we step up a little bit. And now, for taking better quality pictures, that's where it comes into the digital SLR. Now, these are great. You have changeable lenses. The, you have options for either a crop sensor or a full frame sensor. The difference is the size. So, full frame sensor is bigger, crop sensor is smaller, crop down. Both have similar features. You can change the lenses, they do videos, they both work well in low light, like full frame sensor does better in low light because it's a bigger area for more light to come into to expose the picture. So you have a bonus there. Works better in low light, different lenses, so you're not fixed to a certain digital or optical zoom or a fixed digital zoom. You can have I believe you can get lenses down to ten millimeter zoom up to 800 millimeter zoom and variations in between. You can get fish eyes and other fancy lenses to do all kinds of neat stuff with pictures. Now, who's this one going to apply to? Well, the SLR is going to be for the person that likes to take better quality pictures. They're out taking, or taking landscapes, they're doing portraits, they're doing sports stuff where you need the extra zoom. So now we're getting here, so now we have a more niche type of camera. Does it work well for other things? Sure. Vloggers use digital SLRs all the time, but they also use mirrorless cameras. Now, a mirrorless camera, what's the difference between the, a digital SLR and a mirrorless? 
Well, one major difference. There's no mirror. The way a mirrorless camera works is you look into the viewfinder, you look in, you hit a mirror, the image go, or what you see in the mirror is a reflection of another mirror which is going down the length of the, the lens. So a mirrorless camera takes all that out, you get a little LCD display inside the camera, inside the viewfinder, or it might not have a viewfinder at all, and all you have is the, lens, the, the image on the back. Now, they both have changeable lenses, they, they both have slightly different brackets, that way and that varies between brands as well. Because it has the sensor so close, it has a much different bracket to keep the lens farther away so you can still maintain your focal point. Now, pros and cons for each. Mirrorless camera, you're always ready to take a picture because you don't have the mirror, it's always focusing, you can keep that going. Great. Downside, hard on the batteries. Mirrorless cameras, they're always turned on, you're always basically recording, you're always viewing the image on the screen because there's no other way to do it. The digital SLR, the screen isn't always on unless you put it on live view or you're doing a video. So you got major battery savings on the SLRs over the mirrorless. Now, pros, cons, they both work exactly the same. Most of them have the exact same features. So that's up to personal preference. If you have access to batteries or you're not going to be going out anywhere where you have to carry a lot of batteries and you can afford or and you want the compactness of the mirrorless, go with the mirrorless. If you want some slightly different, uh, if you don't mind the slightly bigger size, bigger batteries, longer battery life, feel free to go with the digital SLR. Now, just because I have one, and for a throwback, we've got an old 35. Now, the 35s are fun, but really the only people that are going to use them are the photography enthusiasts because it is so hard to have the film developed. They work exactly the same way as the digital SLR. That's the single lens reflex, that's with the mirror and the shutter, but it puts it on film, so you don't get to see what you take right away. You don't know if you've got the focus spot on. You don't know if you have your exposure right. You kind of really have to know what you're doing because it can be a really expensive learning curve if you get it wrong on a regular basis. So that's why I say the 35s now are more for the photography enthusiasts who are more comfortable with their exposure settings, their uh, f-stops, and all the other fancy terminology that goes along with the mirrorless and the digital SLRs. Now one more that I don't have that I'm going to or mention briefly are action cameras. They're the, the GoPros or now you've got the Sony RX0 and you have a lot of other value brand ones which are decent cameras, do 4K video stills, they're really ru fairly rugged. Those are really for specific uses, those are for action, they're for sports, they're for doing stuff that you normally wouldn't or getting in places where you can't with a normal camera. For the most part, unless you're going to be in those situations, you really don't need one. They basically do the exact same stuff as your phone or a point and shoot. They've got similar issues with your phone. It's a fixed aperture. They don't, uh, I don't have one, but from my understanding, they really don't zoom. They're, the low light is hit or miss. If you're doing in the dark, it's just a write off. The audio on them, on a lot of them anyway, isn't that great because it's just a little mic and it's really, really weather protected because a lot of them they're designed to get wet. I know the GoPro Session and the GoPro Hero 5 on are both waterproof. Now they're only waterproof to I believe about 30 feet otherwise you need to get a case for them which for the most part is fine not many people are really going to take them really deep underwater for sports action stuff. If you're going to do that you're going to get an SLR or a mirrorless camera and you're going to put it in a special underwater housing that's going to really protect the camera for greater depths because then you have greater control over what you're actually going to be recording or taking pictures of. Now, let's talk about how some of these cameras work. You have your point and shoot camera, you have your sensor right here behind this lens, always exposed to light. Good, bad, eh. Not too, too, not too big a deal. It seemed to work just fine. 
you have your, your phone, same issue. The sensor is always exposed to light, always on, you don't have a shutter, so... Eh, they seem to work fine, they don't really seem to be affected by too, too much. They have the drawbacks, so they're both small. So as I said beforehand, small sensor, they suffer for low light. They need The more light you can get into them, the better the picture they'll take. You just don't have a lot to work with, so you're kind of, sort of stuck with it. You go with the digital SLR, the mirrorless, full frame, crop sensor. They're bigger, so automatically they're going to work better in low light. The bigger the sensor, the better it's going to do, but there are ways around it. If, with the different lenses that you can get for it, if you go with a lower F number, then you're going to have better luck shooting in low light because it just goes wide open. So inside these lenses, you have a shutter that opens and closes depending on how you're adjusting the f-stop. That's how you adjust how much light is coming in. The bigger the f-value, the bigger it opens up. Now, with the one I have on my SLR right now, it's an f3 point... I believe it only goes down to an f3.8. I could be mistaken, it might go a little farther than that, but I'm pretty... The 3.8, I believe, is what it is. So it really doesn't let... It does good for the most part, but it's not perfect. If you want a fast light, as they call it, that one is going to let in much more, or sorry, a fast lens is going to let in a lot more light. You're looking at an f2 or an f1.8. Downside with those, the cost goes up. So, pros, cons, and then same, or like I said, same thing with the digital SLRs, the mirrorless. Now, to really explain how those work, Let's start taking a look at the 35 because for that one, we can open it up and expose everything and not actually damage the camera. All right, so let's take a look at the 35 here and we'll really get into the guts of it to see how it works. Now, typical 35, you have your lens. In this case, it's a 50 mil lens. It's a fixed aper it's a fixed lens, so all you can do is focus it. You can't zoom in or out. What you also get from that though, it's a lot more compact size and the bonus of a much faster lens. This one is an f2, so you can actually get, it actually works an awful lot better in low light. Now, on the inside of it, this is the same type of mechanism you have as in the digital SLR. You have your mirror, which is going to go up and down as you're taking pictures to expose a shutter in behind, and that's going to, in turn, on the digital SLRs and this, expose either the sensor or the film. And that's what you use to actually take the image on. So, how does that work? Well, let's pop her open and take a look. So, in the 35, you have the space for your film, you have the roller to wind it on, you have the slides for the guide, and you have the shutters in the middle. Now, for this one, you wind it, push the button, opens up. I have it set on bulb right now so it stays open. You can cl see clear through so the light will come through the lens and imprint on the film at the back. Then as soon as I let go, it closes. Now, because I'm sure you didn't notice as I was doing it the first time, we'll wind it again. So you take your picture, shutter opens up, and then I let go and it opens up again. Now, How does that work? Well, there's actually two sets of shutters. One for the closing is only three blades, and the one that opens is four. Now, by winding it, you can see if I go slowly, it resets by just pulling both of them back down. It's like loading a spring. And literally, that's all that it is for making a 35 millimeter or digital SLR take a picture. Now, Let's talk about the lens for a second. Now, beforehand I was talking about the aperture and the f-stop and what that is. Well, if you look through the lens here, as I turn the ring, or the one ring, you've got the focus, you really don't notice anything. But if I turn this back ring, it clicks. What's the clicking doing? Well, that clicking is closing the iris. The smaller it is, the less light comes in. The bigger it is, more light comes in. Pros and cons, the more light 
gives you a sharper focus on the item or whatever your focal point is of your picture and everything closer or farther away gets blurry. Smaller you make it, everything merges into focus. Now, what this also does, if you have a smaller aperture, if you're shooting anything with a light as a backdrop, you get a nice starburst look. And depending on how many blades the lens has, in this case, you can see that it only has six, will give you a different shape of that starburst effect. And literally, when you're talking about exposure, ask off how much light comes in, that's all you're talking, that's all that you're doing is you're changing just how big or how small the opening is to let light into the lens. So there you have it. Various cameras, all different uses. Which one's better for you? Depends what you want to use it for. If you want a camera that's just going to do uh, snapshots, pictures you take quickly just to remember memories, your phone's going to work perfect. You don't have to buy an extra special camera for it. You're always going to have it with you. Perfect. If you want something that's going to take slightly better pictures, it's going to be able to zoom in, get a point and shoot. If you want uh, something that you can get wet and go underwater, get a point and shoot that's waterproof. Now, if you're going to be doing more action style of pictures, you're going to be getting it wet, go underwater, but not too deep, expose it to heat, cold, all kinds of different conditions, go with an action camera. Sort of self-explanatory, but it's definitely worth the money because if you go with, say, a point and shoot, they're not particularly durable. They're not nearly as durable as an action camera. If you go with your phone, well, you're going to be walking on eggshells the whole time because you don't want to break the screen on that. You don't want to break the back because all of a sudden, if you do drop it once, the whole thing is done and you have to spend a lot more money than you would have had to spend in the first place to get the action camera. Now, if you want to do better pictures, better videos, you go with the digital SLR. You get a bigger sensor, changeable lenses so you can adjust your zoom, your focal length, you can shoot better in the dark. Try the 35. You, a lot of them you can get for fairly cheap, but the, the trade-off is you're going to have to spend a whole bunch of money for film because the film's getting expensive, you have to ship it away to get developed, and then once it gets back, you're limited, you're, they're limited to prints unless they transfer it to a digital CD for you. If they transfer it to a digital CD, then you can do all kinds of stuff with it, but if you just get the prints, you, the negatives come back and then you have to, if you want it pre-printed, you want bigger size, uh, color correction and whatnot, it's a lot more work. So if you're going to try shooting with a 35, make sure you have lots of practice with the digital SLR first because that's going to be your best comparison and your best teacher with the least amount of cost. So. Hope that helps. Have yourselves a good one.